Um, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so last time, very, very quickly, we talked about uh, uh, gradable and strong adjectives. We agreed that with uh, gradable adjectives, we can say very, but with the uh, strong uh, adjectives, we can't say very, but we can use other adverbs, like, for example, like really, maybe, or absolutely. Uh, we also discussed, uh, what else did we talk about? No more. We talked a little bit about sleep, I guess. So today, we'll talk here about uh, showing concern, okay, and giving and responding to advice. So uh, these lessons, the, the two, the D left, the D lesson here, mm -hmm. where it says the uh, real world, these are similar to what we were just talking about, about series and, and sort mm -hmm. of everyday English. This is the kind of uh, real life sort of English uh, in these uh, lessons usually. So here the focus is concern. Do you know what they mean by concern here? Uh, by concern? Mm -hmm. When you say here because it says showing concern, what do you think they mean when they say showing concern? Show that uh, you are interested in, right. in what you are listening. Show some attention, pay attention. Okay. Mm. Attention uh, is, is okay, but there's maybe a better word. Uh, Think of another synonym for concern, showing concern. But attention is close. It's good. It's a good one. Maybe something interest. Better. Interest is also good. But um, what's, what's different? What's the difference between concern and interest? When you say, uh, I'm concerned about him. Or when you say, I'm interested in him, what's the difference? Concern, you are uh, worrying about something. Correct. Yes. It, it, it concern is a mix between care, care and worry, right? Mm -hmm. it means you, mm -hmm. you'll be, maybe this person is close, maybe this person is family, and you want to be supportive, you want to, um, to help, to give advice, mm -hmm. maybe. This is, this is the idea. All right, so, um, so let's start here. Maybe yeah, it's uh, interest with sympathy. Yes, sympathy is probably a very good uh, word which describes concern. There is a bit of sympathy as you sympathize with the person. You're, mm -hmm. you're trying to care about the person. Um, okay, okay. So here we have a few general questions. The first one, it says, what types of problem... Oh, I think there's a spelling mistake here. What types of problems... We should have an essay. Anyways, what types of uh, problems do people often ask for advice about? Okay, so usually, um, what do you think, generally speaking, people, what do they uh, usually ask uh, advice for? Social or private problems? I agree, I think yes. Social, social problems, private problems, personal yeah. problems. These personal are the things problems. people usually ask ask advice, ask for advice about. Okay, okay. What about the last person here in the second question? So wh who was the last person you asked for advice? What did you ask them about? And did their advice help you? Well, She was um, my relative, mm -hmm. uh, my friend, you can say. She was my okay. friend. Uh, I asked it for uh, some advice about, um, uh, I was facing a problem with, uh, with my uh, big, uh, my oldest child mm -hmm. and uh, I asked her for some advice how to deal with this problem uh -huh. and it, it was uh, helpful. Okay, so that's good. Uh, what was the, the problem you asked her about? Well... You don't have to say exactly what it is, but just generally speaking. She was... 
kind of uh, very, uh, very, very uh, got angry. She was, uh, she got angry easily. Uh -huh. So she had a quick temper. And, and a little bit stubborn. Mm -hmm. she, he, did, he doesn't listen to my, my, to the rules or orders or something like if he was refusing what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So she, she said that I have to give him some space mm -hmm. and uh, I have to be a little bit easy going with him uh -huh. for, a, for a period. So he will, that will, will change our relationship to friendship instead of uh, leadership or something. Mm -hmm. Instead of just uh, mother and child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what do you think of, of this advice when you first heard it? Did you think it makes, did it make sense or, or were, you, were you skeptical about this? Uh, actually, I didn't have a choice, mm -hmm. so I I I I I had to to I had to listen and do what she said. Uh, and try. So yeah, it was valuable. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. And, and what about the opposite? Can I have a few, few minutes, please? Sure, take your time. Okay. Okay, hey, turn about to Mlahba. Hi. Hello. Can okay. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. C can I take a minute? Just, just a, a tiny minute. I need to send okay. uh, something important. Stay online. I'm still online. Okay. Don't okay. go anywhere. Okay, okay, so let's, uh, let's continue. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Um, all right, so uh, what about the opposite situation? We talked about when, when someone gives you advice, but what about the opposite situation? Where, when was the last time someone asked you for advice and, and what was the advice that you gave? Uh, actually, I usually give advice to my sisters. Mm -hmm. But uh, the last one, uh, I remember that I advised my sister to continue their, uh, their study and not just stick to the lower educational level. Ah, you mean uh, you, you, you advise them to take postgraduate studies? Yeah. So, and that, that uh, took me a lot of time to convince her, mm -hmm. but uh, no problem. It was fruitful. Ah, well, so she was convinced yeah. or she, she yeah. took your advice? Yeah. Uh -huh. But why, why did she take your advice? Maybe she she was already thinking about that, and I my advice just encouraged her. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was, I think she was looking for encouraging more, more than advising. Uh -huh. uh, so so she just so needed a problem, but she, she need she need to to have some courage. Ah, I see. But what about a situation where she asked you for, for advice, specific advice, just like in the opposite uh, time when you, when you, when you uh, asked for advice from your friend? When was the last time that someone asked you for, for advice in a similar way? Uh, this one is a good example, but I think it's more about encouragement, like you said, because it seems well, that, that she took your advice easily. Yeah, but... Uh... I also remember when she was she asked for advice when she has when when um, uh, my mother asked her to to give my her money to my brother to buy him a car mm -hmm. so she asked for advice because it was a little bit embarrassed she didn't want that. So she asked for advice, how to deal with this embarrassing situation. Yeah. So I said, uh, I, I didn't agree with uh, giving him money. And I, I advised her to not give anyone their, her money because uh, this is her hard work and this is her yeah, time. Yeah, time and hard work and mm, so I'm not I don't I, 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 I'm not sure that my advice was very helpful but because mm. Some situation is very embarrassing and really hard to say no sorry I won't give you yeah I see yeah it's a complicated situation this usually happens yeah. in uh, with with social and personal problems I think it's common yeah but at least I I I uh, I give her some uh, I sympathize with her and uh, I show her that I uh, um, agree with her feeling, but yeah, maybe that uh, was comfortable for her, but not really. I can't say that it's really helpful advice mm. because. Well, at least it's honest advice. You told her what you really believed. Yeah. Mm, I, okay, okay. All right, so now um, we're going to talk a little bit about, do you remember when we talked about Lisa, Rebecca, and Charlie? I don't know if you remember them. I don't think I mm -hmm. remember them. 
Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. I don't remember. Uh, yeah. uh, the uh, the friends who met uh, in the restaurant. Ah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah, they met, and uh, the the two men uh, they were supporting the same football team or something, right? Yeah, and uh, two women with a little child. Yeah, Harry, right? The baby. Okay, okay. I remember it too. All right, so we're going to, the, they have two conversations. So here, uh, so I think we answered the first part here about them in part A, but now we're going to listen to the conversation. Actually, we have two conversations. We're going, we're going to listen to two conversations and we want to see what problems do Rebecca and Charlie uh, talk about. So, so let's go to, let me take you to the listening part. And let's see their problems. What kind of problem do they have? Okay. What do you expect the problem to be? Before we even listen, just uh, a rough guess. Uh, what do you th maybe personal thing. Probably, yes, but what kind of personal problem do you think? Mm. I don't know. All right, well, it's just a guess, no problem. So we're going to listen. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. But here, uh, who do you think has the problem from the, from, the, from the picture here? Who do you think is the one with the problem and who's the one who's giving advice? Uh, actually, I can't make sure from the picture, but it looks like if Rebecca who has a problem. Okay, why do you think uh, so? Lisa is the advisor. I don't know why. Because they're... Uh, I don't know. Rebecca is staring to Lisa with a lot of sadness. Mm, so, yes. Maybe. She looks a little nervous too. Yeah, a little nervous. I'm talking about something uh, worrying her. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you actually, but I don't know yet if that's right. So, so let's listen to it. Let's listen to this conversation and we can find out. So here it is. Let's do it from the beginning. Conversation one. Is the sound clear? Yeah. All right. Um, listen to two conversations. What, uh, um, let's see the instructions. Okay. So we have two conversations. Uh, two. Okay, good. Let me increase the volume. Is the volume okay or is it low? It's okay. Mm. So far, it's okay. Dean. Conversation one. <sighs> Here you are, Lisa. One sugar. Thanks, Rebecca. Where's Harry? Oh, he's uh, having his afternoon nap. Right. You look a bit stressed is everything okay well charlie and i are having a difficult time at the moment oh dear what's the matter harry isn't sleeping very well he wakes up four or five times every night which means charlie and i wake up too of course the trouble is charlie finds it difficult to get back to sleep so he's always absolutely shattered the next day. Mm, I can see why you're upset. That must be really difficult. <sighs> yes, it is. And when Charlie gets home from work, he's really exhausted and fed up. So we're arguing a lot more than we usually do. Oh dear, what a shame. What should I do, Lisa? Well, have you tried talking to him about it? Yes. But we just end up having another argument. 
then he tells me I'm spending too much money and starts getting really angry at me. Oh, how awful. But I only buy things we need for the house and for the baby, of course. Perhaps you ought to spend more time together. You know, just the two of you. I think you need at least one evening off a week. Yes, you could be right. I'll talk to Charlie when he gets home. I'd be happy to babysit for you if you like. Oh, that's very kind of you, Lisa. Thanks a lot. Uh-oh. Sounds like someone's woken up. Back in a minute. Conversation 2. Charlie, have you got the file for the Bradley account? Oh, uh... Yeah, here it is. Thanks. Are you okay? You look exhausted. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just having trouble sleeping these days, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What's the problem? Well, Harry isn't sleeping very well. He wakes us up in the middle of the night, then we can't get back to sleep. Maybe you should sleep in separate rooms. You know, just till Harry's sleeping better. Then you won't wake up so often. Well, it's worth a try, I guess. But it's not just that. Rebecca's spending too much money. Not on herself, but she buys lots of things for the house and the baby that we just don't need. Well, why don't you talk to her about it? I've tried that. And we just start arguing again. And then she tells me I'm working too hard, which is probably true. But I've heard that some people are going to lose their jobs soon, and I don't want to be one of them. Yes, I see what you mean. But I really don't think you're going to lose your job. The company needs you. Thanks, Andy. That's good to hear. So what do you think I should do? Well, I'd take her out for a really nice meal, you know? Just the two of you. That's what Fiona and I do when we're having problems, and it's always really helpful. Yes, that's a good idea. I might try that. Thanks, Andy. No problem. Good luck. Cheers. Actually, I'll call her now. Hi. Hi, honey, it's me. Look, do you think we could get a babysitter this evening? OK. Did you hear the two yeah. problems? It was, yeah. So, so what were the problems? Problems uh, because of um, uh, their child. Mm -hmm. They uh, childly exhausted because he he couldn't sleep well because the child is keep uh, keeping waking up. Uh, at night and uh, kind of couple problem. Okay. Special problem, problem between couple. Okay. Couple. Yeah, that's that's what. Uh, but I think you talk more about Charlie's problem rather than Rebecca's problem, right? Yeah. Uh, Rebecca, uh, she's. Worrying about that, that Charlie uh, get the other day uh, couldn't have good sleep, and the other day he is very exhausted, and and she's uh, um, she's saying that she say he's he says that uh, she is spending a lots of money to buy her things and she uh, she she she's in, in kind of she's denying his uh, claims that she is uh, buying lots of things for her she's spending a lots of money for her things uh, and she's she's saying that uh, he's spending money to uh, to provide uh, things for home and for the baby. So that's fair enough. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I think, yes, I think you summarized the, the two problems. I think you summarized them in a good way. This is uh, more or less, yes, what, what happened. Okay, okay. So here we have a, a few true-false questions, okay? Now, these true-false questions, let me zoom a little bit. Let's try to answer as many as we can without listening again. And then if, you, if we have to, we can confirm, mm -hmm. okay? So let's start with the first problem okay. or the first conversation between Rebecca and Charlie. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, not Rebecca and Charlie, Rebecca and uh, what's her name? Lisa, Rebecca and Lisa, the first, Lisa. The first talk, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, A, do you think this is true or false? The baby wakes up two or three times every night. Yeah, true. Okay, so you think this is true. Let's write T in front of it. Yeah, Rebecca and Charlie are arguing more than usual. Yeah, true. Okay, so the second one is also true. Rebecca thinks Charlie is spending too much money. No, not true. False. So the second one is false. Lisa thinks that Rebecca and Charlie should have two evenings of a week. Mm, I'm not sure about this, but uh, I think, yeah, Lisa advised her to to have uh, an evening week. I'm not uh, two evenings of, I don't know. Mm. Okay, we can check this. Okay, what about yeah. E? And he thinks that Rebecca and Charlie should sleep in separate rooms. False. Mm. Charlie thinks Rebecca buys too many things for herself. Yeah, true. And he doesn't think Charlie will lose her jo his job. Uh, no one, no one talk about this. Oh, it's false. Mm -hmm. They were talking about job? Yes. Uh, they did talk. <coughs> uh, Andy, of course, was, uh, is uh, Charlie's friend. And he's the one who, he was, who was talking to him in the recording. So I'm not sure, maybe I misunderstand that they were call, uh, they were, that they were talking about job. So let me check, okay? I won't answer this. Okay, so let's, this means let's And he it. thinks Charlie should take Rebecca on holiday. Uh, I don't think it was holiday, it was maybe for a meal. Let's check. Okay. Okay, so you don't also, you don't want to answer H either. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. So let's confirm. So we can confirm now. I think we answered the majority. Let's see. Track 15. Conversation 1. Here you are, Lisa. One sugar. Thanks, Rebecca. Where's Harry? Oh, he's uh, having his afternoon nap. Right. You look a bit stressed. Is everything OK? Well, Charlie and I are having a difficult time at the moment. Oh, dear. What's the matter? Harry isn't sleeping very well. He wakes up four or five times every night, which means Charlie and I wake up too, of course. The trouble is, Charlie finds it difficult to get back to sleep, so he's always absolutely shattered the next day. Mmm, I can see why you're upset. That must be really difficult. <sighs> yes, it is. And when Charlie gets home from work, he's really exhausted and fed up. So we're arguing a lot more than we usually do. Oh dear, what a shame. What should I do, Lisa? Well, have you tried talking to him about it? Yes, but we just end up having another argument. Then he tells me I'm spending too much money and starts getting really angry at me. Oh, how awful. But I only buy things we need for the house and for the baby, of course. Perhaps you ought to spend more time together. You know, just the two of you. I think you need at least one evening off a week. Yes, you could be right. I'll talk to Charlie when he gets home. I'd be happy to babysit for you if you like. 
Oh, that's very kind of you, Lisa. Thanks a lot. Uh-oh. Sounds like someone's woken up. Back in a minute. Okay. So let's let's check the first conversation first. Yeah. So number one, is it true? Uh, I think Charlie wakes up two or three times. Not baby. I think the key is, the, the problem is this part. The baby wakes up three or four times every night. She did talk about baby, but I think uh, maybe the number of times is, is the difference. Is the, is three the key. Or four. Three yes, or four. Yes, exactly. That's what she said, yes. She said three or four times, right? So that means we have to... We have to change the first one. Yeah, uh, uh, the sentence has to be match the conversation literally. Yes. Uh -huh. Usually with listening, with listening uh, questions even, because this one is similar also to, uh, like I said, uh, similar in a way to the IELTS style questions. It has mm -hmm. to match literally, <laughs> because this yeah. is not this is not listening for just. It's not uh, general listening. This is listening for detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this means we need to change it. And make so it. It's false. Yeah. This means it will be false now. Okay. Uh, the second one I think is true. Is true. And mm -hmm. they're they're arguing more than usual. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also false, like you said. Now, what about D? What do you think? I'll, I'll show you where the key is. Lisa thinks that Rebecca and Charlie at least have one. Exactly. They should have one evenings of That's week. right. Not so two. It's false. It's false. All right. Very nice. So this one we're done. We finished the first conversation. Okay, let's listen to the second conversation and let's try to get uh, the details we didn't get last time was Andy doesn't think Charlie will, will, uh, will lose his job. This is the first one. And the other one, Andy thinks Charlie should take Rebecca on holiday. So these were the two mm -hmm. points we wanted to confirm. Let's listen. Mm -hmm. Conversation two. Charlie, have you got the file for the Bradley account? Oh, uh, yeah, here it is. Thanks. Are you okay? You look exhausted. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just having trouble sleeping these days, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What's the problem? Well, Harry isn't sleeping very well. He wakes us up in the middle of the night, then we can't get back to sleep. Maybe you should sleep in separate rooms. You know, just till Harry's sleeping better. Then you won't wake up so often. Well, it's worth a try, I guess. But it's not just that. Rebecca's spending too much money. Not on herself, but she buys lots of things for the house and the baby that we just don't need. Well, why don't you talk to her about it? I've tried that. And we just start arguing again. And then she tells me I'm working too hard, which is probably true. But I've heard that some people are going to lose their jobs soon, and I don't want to be one of them. Yes, I see what you mean. But I really don't think you're going to lose your job. The company needs you. Thanks, Andy. That's good to hear. So what do you think I should do? Well, I'd take her out for a really nice meal, you know? Just the two of you. That's what Fiona and I do when we're having problems, and it's always really helpful. Yes, that's a good idea. I might try that. Thanks, Andy. No problem. Good luck. Cheers. Actually, I'll call her now. Hi. Hi, honey, it's me. Look, do you think we could get a babysitter this evening? Okay, I think we're also there are some other things we, we might need to change, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and so let's start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Rebecca and Charlie should sleep in separate rooms, falls. There is nothing about that. Charlie sure? thinks... 
about the first one? Okay, let's check. Let's check. The, <laughs> okay, let's check the other ones. F, G, and H, and we we will go back to E. Okay, tell me about F. Okay. Charlie uh, thinks Rebecca buys too many things for herself. Not true, because he said for a baby and the uh, home, but it's uh, more than they need. Right. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's false. Very good, very good, that's true. Uh, Andy doesn't think Charlie will lose his job, uh, true. Mm -hmm. This is also true, yes, correct. I think Charlie should take Rebecca on holiday, not on holiday, uh, should take her for a nice meal. To a restaurant, yes. Okay, yeah, so this means false, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. now I want you to listen to the first part. I'll just take you to the first part again. I want you to pay attention to this. Track 15. Okay, here it is. Conversation 2. Charlie, have you got the file for the Bradley account? Oh, uh, yeah, here it is. Thanks. Are you okay? You look exhausted. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just having trouble sleeping these days, that's all. I'm sorry to hear that. What's the problem? Well, Harry isn't sleeping very well. He wakes us up in the middle of the night, then we can't get back to sleep. Maybe you should sleep in separate rooms. You know, just till oh, Harry's yeah. sleeping okay. better. Okay, then you won't wake up so often. Yeah. Okay, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, because he's, uh, the baby's waking up too much. Maybe mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good idea until he maybe grows up a little bit or stops it and you can go back. Maybe. Yeah. I think this is a reasonable advice, right? Yeah, it's, it's a common problem with, um, with the families with the little children. Yeah. Most of men doing the same thing are doing the same thing. Yeah. My advice would be uh, just take... Uh, take uh, his wife, Charlie, and the baby, just drop them at uh, her parents' house for a couple of years until the child grows up a little bit. Then they can move in back. I think that's... That would... <laughs> what a funny idea. I think that's more reasonable, easier. Or if, if to make, to solve all kinds of marriage problems, all kinds of marital problems. Oh, by the way, the adjective of, of marriage, this is a as a side vocab note marital like this marital uh yeah marital problem yeah yeah marital marital, marital yeah. Stuff. yeah exactly yes so this is the adjective of marriage marry is the verb marriage is the noun and marital is the, the adjective so the best solution for any marital problems especially when when the new baby arrives is just take her back to her parents' house until the child is about maybe 16, 18 years. And then you can sort of uh, introduce yourself. The father can introduce himself to the baby. He's not a baby <laughs> now, he's an adult. <laughs> but uh, this, this makes it easier to avoid all the childhood stress. Imagine how much stress you could avoid with something as simple as this. Um, okay. Sorry? Yeah, I say maybe. Yeah, I think someone should try this. Okay, so this, this means we got all the answers correct now. We can move on. All right, so uh, work with your partner, compare your answers. We did this too. We confirmed, so we're done with number three. All right, number four. Now, this part is the, is the interesting part. This is the kind of language or the kind of expression. I think maybe this is more British than American, but it's, it's, uh, it could work anywhere, I guess. So mm -hmm. here we want to see how we can show concern, how we can uh, give advice, and how we can respond to advice, okay? So it's sort mm -hmm. of all in one. Okay, mm -hmm. so what we want to do is write these headings in the correct places. All right, so here we have three categories. We have giving advice, responding to advice, and showing, uh, showing concern. Mm -hmm. Okay, but before we can decide, I think we need to, to read all the expressions in, in each group and then, and then maybe we can decide, okay? So, so 
Go ahead. Can you read the first first expression in the first group? Oh dear, what's the matter? Oh, how awful! I can see why you're upset. Oh dear, what a shame! I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, I see what you mean. Okay, mm -hmm. it's clear that it's showing concern. I think I agree with you. That's right. Yeah. Showing concern. This sounds like it's showing concern. Uh, all right. What about the second group here? Okay. Have you tried talking to him about it? Talking to him about it? Perhaps you ought to spend more time together. Maybe you should sleep in separate rooms. Why don't you talk to her about it? I don't talk, I don't take her out for a really nice meal. I would take her. Yes. I would take her out for a really nice meal. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, giving advice. Mm, I think that's right. Yes. Yeah. Giving, giving advice seems right. All right. What about number three? Yes. So this Could is the last I? one. Yeah, we only have one category left. But can you read us? Can you read them for us, please? Yeah. Uh, well, it's worth a try, I guess. I've tried that. But we just start arguing again. Yes, that's a good idea. Um, I might try that. Okay. It's responding to advice. All right. Okay. And here, if you pay attention to the to the phrases used in in the responding part, uh, do you think all of them? Do you think all of them show agreement, or do you think some of them show disagreement? Uh, responding advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they show agreement. All of them? Uh, and um, maybe just one. I've tried that, but we just start arguing again. Yeah, I, I agree. I think this is the one where there's a bit of disagreement to the, the advice. It's not disagreement, but it's saying this didn't work by saying yeah. but. I've tried that, but so automatically this means this advice uh, will, won't work. We've done this. Cancel, cancel that. Yeah, cancel it. Give me another idea. This is probably the idea. Okay, okay. Now uh, here, this is a mini a mini grammar question. It says which verb forms come after the the phrases in bold? Okay, so let's look at the phrases in bold. So we have five phrases here in the middle part, the giving advice section, okay? So we have, have you tried, ought to, should, why don't you, and I'd. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what verb forms come after these words? For the first one, ing form. Yeah, the, yeah, the gerund form, ing form. Mm -hmm. For the other following it, all of them are infinitive. Uh, that's correct. Yes, the rest of them are infinitive. And the first one, uh, ing. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the second, next part, next part of the question it says, look at these ways to ask for advice, fill in the gaps with I should and should I. <coughs> All right, so here they want us to sort of understand the, the very tiny difference between I should and should I, right? So mm -hmm. where, should, where should we use should I and where do we need to use I should? What, what should I? Okay. What should I do? What should right. I do? What should I do? Uh, so the next uh, should be, what do you think I should do? Mm -hmm. Yes. What should I do? 
and the other one, what do you think I should do? Correct. Okay, now let's check uh, on, let's check page 131. Let's see if there's anything extra. I doubt there is, but a quick check. We can come back here, let's see. So 131, mm -hmm. and let's see. Which page is this? Yes, 131, let's clean the page. 131. All right, so this is, the, this is the question we were just answering right now. So the three parts are all correct. Nothing to check here, nothing new. And this is also correct, just like you said. After have you tried, we need an ing form. And the others, we need an infinitive. Nothing new. So it's just uh, only the answers, right? Nothing extra here. No, nothing extra. Mm -hmm. So we can go back. There's nothing new. All right. So this move means we can move on to our next exercise, which is number five. Aha. Uh -huh. This is nice also. Here, uh, you can see how, how how they're paying, uh, uh, they're trying to show us how important intonation is, right? Yeah. So here, it's like, uh, remember when we, uh, uh, I think we did the requests. I'm not sure if it was in, in intermediate or maybe pre-intermediate, uh, pre-intermediate, I think, maybe. But in, in there, there was an exercise almost exactly the same as this one, but it was about sounding polite when you're uh, when you're asking for something during requests so here this is the same idea except it's not a request it's when you want to sound concerned when you want to sympathize with a friend or a family member yeah. or something like this so all we're going to do now we're, we are just going to listen to to two tracks not two tracks it's the same sentence but we're going to hear it twice Mm -hmm. One of the one person sounds more concerned than the other. Okay, so the the okay. sentence which is more concerned, uh, this is the one we will choose. Okay, you get the idea. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's it's only intonation detection. They want us to pay attention. Which one sounds better? Which one sounds mm -hmm. uh, more? Track concerned? sixteen. One. A. Oh dear, what's the matter? B. Oh dear, what's the matter? Two. A. I can see why you're upset. B. I can see why you're upset. Three. A. Oh dear. Okay, so I think we, uh, it's easier to answer each one directly, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to two. One is answered. So um, I'm going to pause after each one. This way it's easier and faster. B. Oh dear. What's the matter? A. Yeah, th this, was, this was number one that they just finished. It's already answered A. Now, now mm -hmm. he's, they're going to do number two now. Two. A. I can see why you're upset. B. I can see why you're upset. Which one? Also A. A. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's correct. Mm -hmm. Three. A. Oh dear. What a shame. B. Oh dear. What a shame. Is it A or B? What do you I think? think? B, because he's stressed. Correct. Uh, uh, that's correct. Yeah, B. Yeah, there was more stress. Oh, dear. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. correct. B is correct. Let's listen to four. Four. A. Oh, how awful. B. Oh, how awful. B. It's also Correct. B. Correct. 
Five. A. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. B. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, it's A. Mm-hmm. Correct. Six. A. Yes, I see what you mean. B. Yes, I see what you mean. B. Correct. All right. Yeah. Okay, so the next part, they want us to listen and practice. And they want us to try as much as possible to, to copy the, the concerned intonation, okay? So let's see if we can do this. I think we can. So let's listen to these uh, four. How many phrases? They didn't say. But let's listen to them. Track 17. Oh dear, what's the matter? Okay, can you can you say it in the same way, with with the same stress? Yeah. Uh, oh dear, what's the matter? Okay. I can see why you're upset. I can see why you are you're upset. Oh dear. What a shame. Oh dear, what a shame. Oh, how awful. Oh, how awful. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, I see what you mean. Yes, I see what you mean. Have you tried talking to him about it? Have you tried talking to him about it? Perhaps you ought to spend more time together. Perhaps you want to spend more time together. Maybe you should sleep in separate rooms. Maybe you should sleep in separate rooms. Why don't you talk to her about it? Why don't you talk to her about it? I'd take her out for a really nice meal. I'll take her around for a... for a... for a... a very nice, nice meal. For a very nice meal. Yes, you could be right. Yes, you could be right. Well, it's worth a try, I guess. Well, it's worth a try, I guess. I've tried that, but we just start arguing again. I tried that, but it's just we really start arguing again. Yes, that's a good idea. Yes, that's a good idea. I might try that. I might try that. Okay. Now, you might ask the question, what's the point of this? Why do we need to do this? Is this important? What, what do you think? Yeah, because uh, with the right intonation, that will convey the real meaning exactly right yes it will convey the 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 warm feeling the the sympathy sympathy the empathy yeah. the care the love to your friend or your family member but if you do it like remember the a b the ones where uh, he's cold oh i see what you mean this sounds like someone who doesn't care 
we're, we're yeah, telling him about our problems and our pain. And he says, oh, I understand what you mean. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, yes, it sounds careless and it sounds cold. And yeah. this is not good. So, so they're trying to get us to, to, uh, to play the role. If you, if you want to help someone, if you want to sound concerned, the intonation needs to, ch to change. And if you notice the intonation, uh, when, you, when you sound concerned or when you want to sound polite or friendly, the, the, mm -hmm. the intonation is always high, right? Mm -hmm. It's always yeah. higher because, yes. because with a low tone, uh, it means someone is maybe uh, aggressive, scary, something like this. So, mm -hmm. so this is, I think, the point. Okay, let's move on. Now here in number seven, this is a bit interesting. So it says they want us to use these prompts to write two conversations. So when they say uh, prompts, it means like, like the options or the things they give us, we, they want us to make conversations from them. Uh, so here you can see this part. Hi, Tim, you look terrible. So this is a prompt. It means they give us like a starting phrase and we mm -hmm. need to finish, we need to build on, on the prompt. This is the idea, okay? What matter? So we need to correct it. We need to complete it or finish it. Do you get the idea? Yeah. Okay, okay. so the first one, uh, you look terrible. So we should say, what's the matter, what's right? What's the matter, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the next part? Uh, I'm going to be Tim. Mm -hmm. No, no, you should be Tim and Bob both because Tim also has answers. I want you to answer all of them. But uh, I have a better idea. Take, take a minute first, okay? Take a minute and check the first conversation. This way it's easier. And when you, when you get all the answers, then we can do them together, okay? So this is the conversation one. And then after that, this is conversation two. So we have two conversations. Okay. All right, so take a look at them and then decide. And of course, if you're not sure, you can always go to 4A, to the previous page in your book. Mm -hmm. 4A, yeah, 4A has, has all, the, all the right prompts, the complete prompts, the complete sentences. Okay, I'm ready. I, okay, so let's see the first conversation, okay? So, uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, ah, the first one, Tim and Bob. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, should I start or you will start? 
uh, I think it's better if you do all the parts because uh, okay, okay. yeah because yeah. they ha all, all of the the parts have yeah okay hi Tim you look terrible what matter Tim my girlfriend and I have had a big argument oh dear I'm sorry to hear that and now she won't answer my calls what should I do Perhaps you ought to write her an email to say sorry. Well, it's worth it's worth it's worth a try, I guess. And I would send her some flowers. Yes, that's good idea. I might try that. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Great, that's correct. Yes. Did you do? Uh, take a minute to do the same thing for Mia and Liz. They also have mm -hmm. a little problem, I think. Mia and Liz, okay. Mm. Mm. It's time. Send it. Yes. I see you. Do you see? What are you? Yeah. I can see. What do you mean? I can see. What you mean? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think I should do? Mm, should. Uh, have you try Do good. Do it. No water. Yes. Yes. I. Mm, I've tried that. Tried that, but it didn't work well. Why? Why don't you? Don't you put it in a bigger pot? Pot, pot. Yes. I. Uh, You could be right. Okay. Uh, Mia, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, look at this plant. It's dying, isn't it? Yes, I can see what you mean. What do you think I should do? How, have you tried to give, to give it more water? 11, can, can I repeat 11? 11. Have you tried to give it more water? Mm -hmm. Okay, and what, what's the verb form after have you tried? Have you tried? Try. No, no, I mean after, after have you tried? To give. Are you sure? Have you tried giving? Yes. You mean, you mean, uh, if I, if I say give, uh, to give, that's, that's not correct? Mm, I don't think so, no. I think tried is one of the verbs where you need to use an ing form after it. Try. Try, try to talk, try talking. Mm, I think it could work both ways, but in this, in this phrase, the ing form fits better. Have you tried talking to him? Have you tried sleeping early? Have you tried eating more protein, right? Mm -hmm. So ING is better here. Yeah, okay. Have you tried giving it more water? Yes, I've tried that, but it didn't work. Well, 
don't you, well, why don't you put it in a bigger pot? Yes, you could be right. Thanks for the advice. All right, very nice. Okay, so since all of them are correct, I think we can do them now in a conversation. So I'll take Bob, you can take Tim, and then I'll take uh, maybe Nia and you can do this, okay? Okay. Okay, so let's give this another chance. Hi, Tim, you look terrible. What's the matter? My girlfriend and I have had a big argument. Oh dear, I'm sorry to hear about that. Or I'm sorry to hear that. And now she won't answer my calls. What should they do? Perhaps you ought to write her an email to say sorry. Well, it's, 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 worth, it. it's worth a try, I guess. And I'd send her some flowers. Yes, that's a good idea. I might try that. That's a lot. Okay, now Mia. Look at this plant. It's dying, isn't it? Yes, I can see what you mean. What do you think I should do? Well, have you tried giving it more water? Yes, I've tried that, but it didn't work. Well, why don't you put it in a bigger pot? Yes, you could be right. Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, yeah. So here it's, it's all about uh, this intonation thing, right? Showing you're friendly, you're concerned, you care about your, your friend and family. I think this is, this is the main point here. And in addition to these expressions, I think they're very useful uh, mm -hmm. to listen to your, to your family members when they complain or uh, trying to help them. All right, so this was number seven. We did number part B, we practiced it. Working groups of three, 102. I don't know what this is, but I think it's a group work, which we cannot do, but I'm just curious. I want to see what it is. 102. Let's just check it. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, what's this? It's a group work. It's a group it, activity. Yeah, it's a group activity, yes. Mm. Uh, hard to do it. Uh, I think it's yeah. hard. But yeah. uh, let's see if we can use any of it. Let's just erase this. I have something in the book. This book is so weird. <clears throat> Never mind, let's read this. Work on your own. Let's zoom out. Imagine you have this problem. So it says, imagine you have this problem and think, hmm, yeah, I don't think we can do this. We need to go back. Okay, let's go back. All right, so uh, let's let's do the listening part here. Um, why? Okay, just a second. I think I missed something. Okay, now I need to close this. Okay, now we're okay. Okay, so uh, let's see this work in pairs. Do you remember the stronger weak forms? Listen again. Practice. Uh, which company do you... Okay, we can skip number one because we already know most of these are. They, they almost mm -hmm. always use them in the weak form. They very rarely, mm -hmm. they very rarely use them in the strong form. So we can skip number one. Now let's see if number two might be beneficial. So listen to this conversation, circle the words in pink that you hear. Aha. Uh -huh. Now this time it's the, it's the opposite way. It's the opposite of our last exercise. Oh. Remember our last lesson, we yeah. circled we circled the weak forms. This time they want you to circle the strong forms, mm -hmm. right? So if you hear it completely, so if you hear the whole word together, if you hear, just a second.
Okay, just a second. I think there's something wrong with the battery, okay? One, one minute, I'll be back. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, sorry. So uh, the point of this exercise, it's a listening exercise, but this time we need to we need to circle the strong forms, okay? So let's circle the strong forms. Let's open the track and see. Track 18. Which company do you work for? It's called Getaway Holidays. I work for the owner. Really? I'm thinking of going on holiday soon. Do you think you can get me a cheap flight? Yes, maybe I can. Where do you want to fly to? Well, my brother's working at a hotel in the Caribbean and I'd like to go and see him. Which hotel is he working at? It's called the Island Palace. Do you know it? Yes, I do. How long do you want to go for? About three weeks if I can. OK, I'll see what I can do for you. Text me. OK. Which ones do you think are in the full form, the strong form? Uh, not all of them. Yeah, of course, not all of them. Remember that uh, we're still, we're still the, the same rule from last time. The majority are in the weak form. Yeah. This is the idea. Yeah. When, when Ed said, yes, maybe I can. Uh -huh. I think that's in a strong form. Okay. And the other one, uh, which hotel, which hotel, which hotel is he working at? Okay. I think it's in strong form. Uh, it's called the Island Place. Do you know it? I'm not sure about this, but uh, but I'm sure about when Ed uh, said, yes, I do. I do is in the strongest form. Uh, do you want to go for, for uh, I think it's strong here. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, about three weeks, if I can. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a strong form. Also, okay, I'll see what I can do. What I can do for you. I'm not sure really about it, but. Okay, I think you missed only, I think you missed only two, but we can check them in the scripts. I think they're, they're uh, where are they? Let's see. Uh, I think we can check this in the script. They show us the answers. Uh, let's go to the script. So here's the script. This is track, uh, track 18. So I think you need to go to page uh, where is it? Yeah, I got it. You found it? I found it. Track 18. Do you see? So the, mm -hmm. the blue ones are strong. 
So can is correct. You said can, maybe I can. This is correct. Mm -hmm. You said uh, working at, this is correct. And you said yes I do is correct. And you said can is correct, right? So I think mm -hmm. the, the only ones you missed, uh, you missed two, this two. Mm -hmm. And you also missed a four. Yeah. Uh, and you also missed uh, you. But otherwise, very good. I think you spotted most of them. So now I think you get the idea here. Uh, I think it's clear to you uh, mm -hmm. the difference between the strong and the weak form and that the weak form is, uh, is the one that's usually used, but very rarely if the, if the word because these words are usually either uh, adjective, not adjective, sorry, either prepositions or maybe conjunctions oh, no. like and. So unless they're at the end of the sentence or unless it's, a, it's, a, it's an answer, a positive answer, it's a short answer to a yes, no question. I think these are the only situations where we use the strong form. Otherwise, we don't use the strong form. Uh, listen again, practice. I think we got it. We can move on. We can move on. All right. So uh, let's talk about our new topic here, the tourist trade. Mm. This looks interesting. We're going to talk a little bit about travel. And we'll start with some uh, phrasal verbs which are related to travel. Uh, what else are we going to talk about in this lesson? The present perfect simple to do, talk about experience to talk about unfinished past and recent events. Okay, so I think they will give us a little more detail of mm -hmm. uh, about the present uh, simple, the present perfect, how to talk about it in more detail, different ways of using mm -hmm. it. So maybe this is similar to what we did with the, with the present simple and uh, the present continuous, if you remember, we sort of yeah. detailed it a little more. So they'll do the same thing here. So let's start with vocab and speaking. Okay, so it says here, can you guess the meaning of the phrasal verb in bold? Then check, uh, then check in page 132. Okay, let's, uh, mm, it's not very clear here in my book. Okay, now, now I can see them better. All right, so, uh, so here we just want to guess. So if, if you know the, the phrasal verb, great. If you don't know mm -hmm. it, that's fine, just give it a guess, and then we'll check what it really means. Can you read the first sentence for us here, please? Have you ever set off very early to go on holiday? Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, they mean uh, by set off? Set off, I guess, from the context here that you'll prepare yourself, or you'll get ready. Okay, so let's, let's write your answers on the side. So let's put them here. Let's change this here. So number one, you say uh, to get ready or prepare, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is number one. What, what about number two? What's the best way for tourists to get around your country? Uh, to get around, uh, to to wander around your country, or to to have a tour. Okay, so wander or have a tour. Okay, what about number three? What problems do people sometimes have to deal with? Deal with uh, to deal with on holiday. To face or okay. people sometimes face it, facing or something. All right, so I wrote face. Or be encountered. Or to encounter face or encounter. Okay. And what about number four here? What do you think? When people stay in hotel, what happens when they check in? Check in um, and they have the permission to stay in that hotel. Okay. Yeah. So permission to stay, let's say. 
Okay, and what about check out in the, in the next sentence? Yeah, check out is the opposite of check in. When you mm -hmm. get your stuff and leave the, the hotel and... No, okay, leave the hotel. This is number five. What about six? Did, anyone, did you want to see you off the last time? You went on holiday? Uh, Mm -mm. Have you? Know. Okay, can you give it a guess? Just a rough guess. Did anyone see you off the last time? Yeah. See you off. Hmm. I don't know. It's crazy. Mm. It's uh, a phrase of, yeah. Up here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can leave this unknown. What about seven? Did anyone pick you up from the airport or the station when you got back? Okay, uh, pick you up. Uh, uh, drives you or drive you. From where to where, drive? Or give you a drive, uh, give you give you a ride give, or something. Give okay, ride. so give you a ride, maybe. Yeah, give you a ride. Mm -hmm. Got back? You think it's sort of clear, right? Yeah, got back, you come back. Yeah, you come back or maybe you return. So come back or return or got back. Okay, what about uh, number eight? Have you ever had put up with noisy people on holiday? Put up? Mm, maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure. I haven't seen this, this, uh, this uh, phrase before, but mm -hmm. let's say maybe, maybe uh, have a problem or argue with noisy people on holiday. Okay, so you say noisy. Mm -hmm. Get in trouble with. Maybe get in trouble. And get yeah. in trouble. Noisy people on holiday. Does anyone look after your pets or plants? Look after taking care of okay. or, or keeping an eye on. Yeah, take care, keep an eye on. When you go away, when you go away, when you when you go away, when you travel, when you mm -hmm. have a long trip. Okay. Are Number you looking ten? for to looking forward uh, to your next holiday? Uh, looking forward. Um, um, I know it's in Arabic, but uh, in English. Try to do it in English. Uh, looking forward to your next holiday. Uh, are you excited about your okay. next holiday? Excited yeah. or feeling excited? Yeah. Are you feeling excited? All right, let's see how many of these guesses are correct, are right. So let's go and check page 132, and we can confirm this. Okay. So, uh, set off. Um, okay, start the journey. Yeah. You're close. You said get ready, prepare. Yeah. Which is, which is not too far away, actually. It's almost the same. So this means you guessed it, I think, pretty well, first one. Um, uh, I guess mm -hmm. um, not pretty enough close because set off here, the meaning of set off uh, when you are leaving, not prepare. Yes, to start. Yeah. Uh, this is the idea. When you, when you the, beginning, the beginning of the journey. The, the starting point. Yeah. 
Correct. Um, get around. You said wander or have a tour, and it says here travel to different places in the same town, which is this what this? I think what you said is correct too. It's the same meaning. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the cheapest way to get around? Of course, when you get around, it means you're in the same city, in the same place. You want yeah. to get around Tripoli. If I ask you, what's the easiest way to get around Tripoli? You can say by car, maybe uh, on foot. If you live in the city center, maybe on foot mm -hmm. is better. Okay. Then uh, we have to deal with something. You said to face or to encounter. It says here to do something in, or in order to solve a problem or achieve something. I think it's the same. Because when you yeah. deal with something, you have to face the problem. You have to encounter. Something. But maybe, maybe in our in our guess, we we didn't emphasize the the, the solution part, the solving part. Yeah. We 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 emphasized uh, facing the problem, but not solving it. So deal with is is maybe two in one. You face the problem, you counter the problem, and, and you try try to fix it or try to solve it, maybe. I have to deal with a lot of difficult customers as part of my job. So this is the example. Uh, Check-in, I think, is clear. It's obvious. Uh, this is when you start your hotel stay, okay? So this is when you arrive and you get the key to your room, clear. Check-out is when you give back the key or the card and you leave. It's also clear. Okay, so number six is the one we didn't know to see somebody off. Can you read this and read the example? Go to the place where somebody is leaving from, for example, an airport or station, to say goodbye. Oh, yeah. Tuadda. Okay. Yes. Say goodbye them. Yeah. My parents came to see me off at the airport. Yeah, it's new and inter interesting also. Yes, see me off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, so this is, I think this is only the only real new one for you, maybe. Yeah. And there's also put up with, we'll get to it in, in a second. Okay, mm -hmm. to pick up something, this is clear, this is what you said. Someone mm -hmm. is waiting and you, and you take them where they want to go. And what you said was to give someone a ride, to give you a ride. Mm -hmm. uh, it is correct. This is the same thing. So the, the, the example is, can you pick me up from the station? So if you call someone and you say, can we pick me up? Or if someone, your sister or brother, they call you, can you pick me up from the station? Of course, they want a ride. They want you to yeah. drive them, to bring them home or bring them, uh, drive them somewhere else. Okay, uh, get back. I think this is clear. It's return. And this is what you said. Uh, get back. This uh -huh. is the new one. To yeah, put up with point. something. Mm -hmm. Can you read this? Accept a situation or a problem that you don't like because you can't change it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you put up with all this noise. Mm -hmm. uh, well, put up here. Accept situation or problem that you... So if you want to change it, if you want to change it into a normal verb, what, what should you say? Put up. Uh, adapt. Mm, not exactly, because adapt, close, you're close. Okay, say it in Arabic, maybe the translation isn't right. Uh, Um, uh, bear or stand. Bear or stand, correct? I think this is better than Ada. There's another yeah. one, to tolerate. Do you know tolerate? Tolerate, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're not enjoying it. You don't like it. But, but, but mm -hmm. you can't do anything about it. You can't but change also, it. Can, you can say, how, how can you stand this noise? Yes, you can. If you want to use a synonym instead of put up with, you can use stand. How yeah. can you stand this? How can you bear this? Yeah. Bear maybe is a little too strong, but 
standard is, is I think, better. How can you tolerate this? You can't say, how can you tolerate? Yes, you can, but tolerate is a little uh, formal because sometimes in schools and universities, for example, in IELTS, they say in IELTS they have a, a zero tolerance policy for cheating. So they don't tolerate cheating. If, if, if you're caught cheating once, they will ban your passport number. You can't do any other exams with, with your passport, with your ID yeah. anymore. They usually use it as a noun, as a noun more than... Uh, yes, tolerance, yeah, uh, zero no tolerance. Number. This is a common yeah. phrase in schools, universities. They say we have zero tolerance for uh, discrimination or hate speech or bringing weapons to, to for example, a university or a school. Zero tolerance. You'll get fired or you'll get expelled uh, right away. So zero tolerance, it means no, no yellow card, red card from the beginning. This is the idea, zero tolerance. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah. Uh, get back is clear, put up, we talked about it, look after, it's clear, go away is clear, look forward to something, yeah, I think we also answered this correctly, feeling excited to feel happy about something. All right, so this means the only really new ones, uh, we only have two, to see somebody off, which is to say goodbye to someone before they travel, to see mm -hmm. somebody off, and to put up with something which is to tolerate or to stand it, to accept it, but you don't really enjoy it and you can't really change it. So it's like uh, what Charlie has to do. Charlie has to put up with his crying baby, with Harry. Yeah. He has to put up with it. It's his child, his problem. So he needs to put up with it. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Mm, set off here some some photos i don't think there are any useful set off uh, so do you see set off it's the beginning of the trip they're about to start the, the man in the car here can you see him in the in the picture yeah. set off yeah. see off you're saying goodbye to your friend pick up and check in of course are clear to you no need to talk about them let's check the tips you can also check in at an airport or or online before you fly. Okay, this is also clear to you, I, I think. Mm -hmm. Check-in airport or check-in hotel, it's the same. We say get back home. Uh -huh. So here we can't say, of course, get back to home. There is no place for the preposition to. You have to say it directly, get back home, right? Or, so you don't say get back from home or get back to home. Don't use any no. preposition. Uh, this is also an important note, and it's a bit strange. Uh, I'm looking back forward to... There's also go back home. Go back home, yes. The idea with home, we shouldn't use the preposition to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the last tip, can you read the last tip? The last tip. We often use verb ing after look or word to. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I have a clue about this. Yeah. yeah. So the first time I knew about this, I thought it was very strange. Why can't I use infinitive? I'm looking forward to see you. It sounded natural, it sounded normal to me, but according to the yeah. rule, no, you need to use an ing form. So, so you have to say, I'm looking forward to to meeting you, I'm looking forward to working with you, I'm looking forward to traveling with you, I'm looking forward to eating this meal, this dish, whatever. Uh, all right, so I think we can go back and let's uh, see. The same, uh, the same situation with the, I've tried to, and I, I tried doing something or to do something. It yeah. sounds naturally when you say I have tried to, to do something. Yeah, but, it, but the, the ING is sometimes mm, maybe more suitable in, in, uh, with certain verbs and certain expressions. Yeah. Um, okay, so these are just some uh, phrasal verbs used for travel. Uh, let's see what we have next. Uh, it says here, ask and answer questions. Ask follow-up questions. Okay, so uh, let's 
because we're, we're about done, but let's use, let me use the two new ones in, or, or I'd like you to use the two, the two new phrasal verbs, use them in questions and ask me uh, these questions. So I'd like you to use put up with, and I'd like you to use uh, see off. Okay, can you use them in questions? Mm. Mm. Uh, I'll see you off. Did anyone see you off the last time you went on holiday? Okay, can you think of another example? Because this one is written. Uh, okay, who? Uh, okay, completed. Who? Who? Uh, who's the most? Or uh, who's the last person? Uh, Uh, who's the, uh, you can mm -hmm. of course you can of course change who, them change the tense. Who, who, who usually who okay. usually uh, see you off when you are going on holiday? Good. Who usually sees you off? Here we just need to add the s. Who usually uh, sees you off when you travel? Or if I want to use your first example. Who was the last person who saw you off before you traveled? So see, yeah. saw, seen. Uh, you can change them depending, because phrasal verbs are verbs. You can change them depending on the tense. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, last example. Can you, give, can you put, uh, put up with something? Can you put it in, in a question? Uh. For how long you can put up with with no power? Okay, very good. Uh, how long can you put up with without uh, power or without any power? For or for how long can you put up? Can you put up without? Can you put up with no power? With no power is the right. For how long can you put up? with no power? It's a good question. I think it depends. It depends if you have uh, an alternative, a substitute or not. If you have an alternative, I think it's okay. If not, it's a bit difficult, I think. All right, so uh, so that's all for today, unfortunately, but I think we, we you can already see what the focus of unit three is. It's mainly mm -hmm. about, it seems, tourism and travel uh, let's see, 3B is the same thing, Lonely Planet, because usually the Why? book w work in, works in themes, it works in volunteers. So Unit 3 is all about uh, tourism and travel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a question? You were about to ask uh, something. Uh, why, why did the title uh, uh, is like this, The Tourist Trade? Mm -hmm. uh, why it's not say uh, uh, why uh, it is not the, um, instead of uh, the tourism trade yeah I'm not sure to be honest I don't really know but I think they're using it here the tourist trade they're using it like a compound noun or something they're using oh, yeah. it maybe in, a, in that kind of way but mm -hmm. the tourism trade works works well as I think it's, it's also correct that I can check this, but I'm not really sure why they chose tourist instead of tourism. Um, mm -hmm. But let's see, maybe there's a clue here. No, th th there's nothing that says. But I can check this for you and I'll see, because I was wondering about it too. Why not tourism, the tourism trade? It sounds a little more natural maybe as a first choice instead of tourist. Um, okay, uh, so this means I'll send you the book I told you about earlier, 
uh, I'll send it now to you in, in the inbox. And I'll try to, to choose things which might not be too too irrelevant. We need something sort of relevant to what we're what we're talking about here. So we might okay. do that. All right. Okay. Okay. So have a nice day, and I'll see That's you great. next time. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Have a good day. Have a good day. Thank you.